Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name's Matt. So this is a little different from my past videos. The reason I've not been uploading content lately is due to problems I've had with my home lab. Let's say I've had some technical issues and well, I was getting pretty frustrated and ended up biting the bullet and buying a new server from eBay. So I thought it'd be cool to share with you what I've been up to, show you around the hardware that I've bought and explain how I'm gonna be using it in my up and coming videos. So with that being said, let's geek it up. So after looking around eBay and trying to work out what I wanted, I ended up going for this Cisco UCS C240 M4 server. Um, the price was £385, which is approximately $520. It, it was advertised with one Intel Xeon E5-2680 V3 12-core CPU with 32 gig of RAM, two power supply units, um, a 32 gig SD card, which connects directly to the motherboard known as the Cisco Flex Flash Controller. This had ESX audio installed on there. The guy also was advertising two one terabyte Barracuda 2.5 um, inch SATA drives installed, ready to go. Um, and yeah, it came in at 385 pounds. And I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. That's, that's a good price. So I thought, right, that's good, but I reckon I can get more out of this, but I need to figure out how much it was going to cost me. So I contacted the guy and said, look, I need another CPU. Um, have you got one? I need some more RAM. Have you got one? He was like, yes, I do. I said, great. Can you give me a price? So he came back for an additional CPU and heatsink of £135, which was approximately $180, and another 32 gig of RAM for £68, which was $90. So I thought, right, that is much better. You know, that's going to give me uh, 24 cores with, and then with hyperthread enabled, that's going to give me 48 logical cores. You know, that is like that's mega. That's a lot of compute power for for a home lab. So I was like, right, okay, for 588 quid, which is, what, $790, this is going to give me plenty of headroom to do all my labs, um, be able to run EVNG, be able to put Cisco viral iOS images on there, routers, layer 2 switches, everything I wanted to do. So I was like, right, this is, this is exactly what I want. So I pulled the trigger and I bought it and it turned up and yeah it's mega loud i'm not, not gonna not gonna lie it's not something you want in your living room but it is something um that i needed something i wanted so i'm okay i can put it in a another room in a and, and i can access it remotely so it doesn't really bother me but this is a big investment this is something that is if you're learning new technologies you need something that's capable otherwise you're just going to get into all sorts of problems. You're going to get frustrated. So I thought, well, just going to do it once, once and for all. And it's just going to give me what three or four years of, um, you know, being able to do everything that I need to do right now. So that's what I did. And I'm mega happy. So uh, very cool. If you guys are thinking about doing it, definitely do it. It's, it's a big investment. If you are starting out in your, uh, you know, in your IT career, or you're you know, getting to Cisco or Palo Alto or Fortigate or Checkpoint VMware, you're gonna need something like this. You know, this is a big investment. So, you know, if you can afford it, go for it. That's my advice. So before I wrap up this video, I'm gonna give you a tour around the Cisco UCS chassis using the Cisco integrated management controller, which is accessible using the management IP address of the CIMC um, and is directly through a browser. Now you may be drawn to the older versions of the UCS, so the M3. Now what I'm just going to warn you about is that the Cisco uh, integrated management control software that runs on those older versions do not support HTML5 and they still use Flash Player. Now a lot of uh, web browsers these days do not support that and it will cause you problems. There are some workarounds, um, but I wasn't even going to entertain it. 
HTML5 is the way to go. So even though the M3s are cheaper, um, just keep that in mind. So let's just log in. So when you log in, you are given the summary of the chassis. So all the uh, all the relevant information, server properties, the actual management controller, IP address, etc., the firmware version, and also the chassis status. If we go up here and click on the inventory, you can go through and look at what hardware is installed here. You can see the two uh, Xeon processors that gives me 24 threads. Um, I've got 64 gig of memory installed and it's got a cool little feature on here if you click on the dim location diagram it actually gives you a layout of all the dim slots available on the server and uh, i've read that these can take 64 gig per slot so that would give you a massive 1.5 terabytes of memory which is just mind-blowing so that's uh, that's quite cool that that um that diagram gives you a, a good idea then you can go on to the PCI adapters and you can see everything that's installed, the Ethernet adapters, the radio controllers, etc. Now I've got redundant power supplies, so I've got two PSUs here. I've got no VIC adapters. Then the network adapters, I've got six ports, um, as well as the dedicated management port. And then the storage adapters. So if we go back over there, we'll take a look at the storage. So we've got this Cisco Flex Flash. So if we click on physical drives, there's two slots on the motherboard. I've got a slot populated with a 32 gig card at the moment. This is where ESXi has been installed for me. This is the guy who I bought the server from already had already had this installed on there. Now I was having a quick look through this. It looks like this has been set up as a um, as a mirror. It says here mirror primary. So I think what that means from what I understand is that if I had another SD card in this in slot two, I could mirror that um, that configuration over that storage over for redundancy. So if I click on virtual drives, it's called hypervisor. I think this is a, something you can name yourself and it's uh, in a RAID configuration. And at the moment it's only 32 gig and it's degraded because there's only one card in that kind of RAID configuration. But that's quite cool. I'll take a look at that, see if I can put some redundancy in there. Then we've got the actual RAID controller itself. Um, I think it's, yeah, 16 physical drivers can be installed onto here, which is, you know, really scalable. Um, I've got four drives, a couple of one terabytes, and a couple of two terabytes. Uh, and you can go into the, um, the virtual drive. So this is uh, the RAID configuration. I haven't really settled on what RAID configuration I'm going to use in this la on this lab server. At the moment, I've just got on RAID 5. Um, I'm not really that fussed about redundancy on here. I may go for performance because I can use my iSCSI target on my TrueNAS server. So I've got I've got storage options. So I'm, I'm going to have a play with this. Um, what else we got? Um, yeah, so that's it really. You can go through the compute and, and look at the BIOS and remote management stuff. Um, you've got the networking um, tab there and you've got the admin tab. Um, I think the only final thing I want to show you is you can launch the KVM um, and it gives you a Java based or HTML based. So if I just launch this, it opens up a new window and uh, just click on this link. And this is just going to give me the exact view is as if I was in front of the server with a, a keyboard and mouse um, plugged into it. So this is great. This is exactly what I wanted because my server's in a different location. I can do everything through the web browser. I don't have to keep going backwards and forwards if I want to configure anything on ESXi. So this is this is a really cool feature and you can bring your keyboard up and you've got tools and power. And there's all sorts of stuff on here. So yeah, this is really good. So I'm really happy that this server is going to give me everything I need. So yeah, that's it really. Um, just giving you an, an idea of what I've bought and how I'm going to use it. So, well, I hope that's been useful. Um, I'm going to make some more videos on this. I'm going to go through the whole process of, of building this server and its capability um, and, and, you know, start getting onto some labs uh, with EVNG and get some Palo Alto devices in there and using uh, Cisco routers and layer two switches, etc. 
so that I can play with some of the things I can't do in VMware Workstation, start using networking devices or appliances so I can do uh, root, uh, dynamic routing and uh, all those good things. So uh, yeah, I hope, I hope you found that interesting. And uh, if you've got any questions, just drop them in the, uh, in the uh, comments below. Uh, but thanks very much. I'll uh, see you on the next video. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now. But just in case you don't, please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.